Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Manas Patnaik and so guys this time around we'll be taking on a pentagonal pyramid. Alright, so let's get started with the problem and here it comes. A pentagonal pyramid base 25mm side and axis 50mm long has one of its triangular faces in the VP. And the edge of the base contained by that face, I mean the face which is in the VP, alright? makes an angle of 30 degrees with the HP draw edge projection. Alright guys, so we have an object in the form of a pentagonal pyramid. Here is the pentagon at the base, okay? It's a regular pentagon with a center somewhere here and from that center when you go upstairs by an amount of 50 millimeters, you'll have this point V as the axis. Alright, now let's move forward with certain conditions. Now there is this condition that has been given to us, has one of its triangular faces in the VP. So while making the drawing, you've got to make sure that one of its triangular faces is in absolute contact with the vertical plane. Alright, so I've written down the condition triangular face in VP. There is one more condition. Let's uh, read further. And the edge of the base contained by that face. Now, if you, if if randomly we say we look take a look at this triangular face. Let us say VBC. Okay, so this triangular face is going to have a base edge in the form of BC. Okay, now that base edge is going to make a certain angle with the horizontal plane, and that has magnitude 30 degrees. So we'll write down this condition theta base edge of triangular face in VP is equal to 30 degrees. Now in the next section, I'm going to give you a demonstration as to how the object that is a pentagonal pyramid has been kept with respect to HP and VP and eventually how its orthographic projection can be made in simple three steps. All right. So let's take a look at it guys. So guys, this over here is what you call a pentagonal pyramid. You can see this very well and this base is having the shape of a pentagon now. Uh, the dimensions of which I have already told you and I will be positioning this object according to the condition that has been given in the problem. So let's see how that goes. Alright guys, so this is the object under consideration and you can clearly see that this is a pentagonal pyramid and has as many as 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 triangular faces. Now as, as far as the question is concerned, it has been clearly said that one of its triangular faces, let's say this one is in absolute contact with the vertical plane or is in the VPN, it's going to be something like this. So this is something that we're going to make sure it happens in the step number two. And for step number one, the initial assumption is going to be this. Okay. This is going to be for step number one. And you guys are looking at this object from the front. Okay. Whatever you are seeing from here is from the front. And this can be referred to as a vertical plane. All right. So this is going to be the step number one. It's corresponding front view is going to be made initially. And then it's top view will be made. And after this, we are going to do for step two. Step 2 is going to be something like this, making sure that this triangular face rests on the vertical plane. This is going to be step number 2. Okay. Now guys, you can clearly see this. This is the triangular face lying on VP. It has a base edge and this base edge in fact is going to make a certain angle with the horizontal plane. So this is what step number 2 and this is going to be step number 3. Okay. Now this base edge is going to make a certain angle something like this. So this is going to be theta base edge all right so these are the three conditions or other two conditions which we have to implement in our problem so this is step three this is going to be step two and this is going to be step one all right once again i'll reiterate this is going to be step one okay front and top will be made then this is going to be step two where a triangular face is resting on the vp and this will be step three Okay, and in step three, we have made sure that the base edge of that triangular face, which lies in the VP makes a certain angle theta with the horizontal plane. So this was all about the orientation and positioning of this particular pentagonal pyramid. Now guys, let's head over to drawing sheet and see how all these things can be implemented in the best possible way. Let's get started. All right, guys, now that you have seen how the object has been really kept, we can now begin drawing. Okay, so initially our assumption was that this particular pentagonal pyramid is resting with its base on the vertical plane okay and uh, we're gonna start by making a vertical line you can see over here and then I'm gonna write here B dash let's say and from B dash to A dash the length is going to be 25 millimeters right so this is gonna be A dash all right now let's move further so we have this corner and this corner now pentagonal pyramid has internal angles of 108 degrees so you can keep your protractor over here all right and then from here you need to take 108 degrees in the anti-clockwise sense and then you need to keep your protractor over at p dash and then in the clockwise sense you need to take 108 degrees on doing so you'll have two points and somewhere along those points you're gonna have a line of 25 millimeters long something like this please watch all right so this is a dash b dash this is going to be c dash 
and over here i'll show you it's eventually going to be d dash and this is going to be e dash so let's for now concentrate on c dash and e dash next step can be done pretty easily you can have a compass and with a radius of 25 millimeters you can put an arc over here and then again with a radius of 25 millimeter and with e dash as the center you can again put an arc cut an arc rather and both those arcs are going to intersect at a certain point and that's going to be point d dash for you all right guys next step is to have the apex in the front view that can easily be done please watch the steps and this is going to be super cool um you have this corner let's say this is corner d all right and there is this side or edge opposite to it you can have the center of that edge all right so the center of 25 is going to be 12.5 you can join a line all right next step is let's say we have this corner e dash and right opposite to e dash is this b dash c dash edge with center somewhere here again 12.5 is going to be the center point and you can again make a line joining them okay now these two are going to intersect at a certain point and that is going to be your apex and eventually it should look something like this so this is the apex in the form of o dash now let's look at this object right from the top okay so let's draw the project lines and this is going to be a comma b the corresponding top view this is going to be c and e this is going to be d and now from when you look at this object right from the top you're going to see this a e d all right something like this okay and these are the points now let's move forward in the top view you're also going to see the axis now this axis length in this particular question has been given as 50 millimeters right moving ahead when you look at this object from the top this slant edge a o e o and d o are going to be visible hence we are going to make solid lines for that and this is your point o all right guys now in this step number two we have to make sure that one of its triangular faces um, is in absolute contact with the vertical plane let's say are we going to have this triangular face that is o a b um, in the vp all right and its corresponding top view is a line okay this is a b o this is a line in fact all right now this may appear as a line but in reality this is a triangle a triangular face so what we'll be doing is we are going to recreate this top view in step number two making sure that this a b o line entirely overlaps this x y line okay so let's move ahead and let's say we have a point over here make a point point o and from o keep one leg of a compass here other leg over here then with o s center you need to put an arc something like this and this is going to be point a comma b for you all right guys moving ahead we want to have point d also okay so point d is going to wander somewhere here and for point d we are going to again have an arc let's say we keep one leg of a compass over at a another leg over at d we take this guy as center you need to put an arc something like this then again the same stuff has to be repeated you need to keep one leg of your compass at o other leg at t then with this guy o as the center you need to cut this arc already which we have put all right so this intersection point will give you point d now let's join them that's it okay so now we have made sure that this o a b overlaps this x y line which means that the triangular face is resting absolutely in the vertical plane right guys fine let's move ahead we will keep one leg over here at the other leg at e comma c then with this guy as center we need to put an arc here again and this is going to be point e comma c okay and e comma c is joined to o with the help of this solid line so let's replicate this done fine guys now the top view is done of step number two and now we're going to look at this object right from the front some from here all right so we, we're going to have uh, the projector lines from all the points from o from d e comma c a comma b like this right let's move ahead and let's have the projector lines from the left of your screen that is from step number one's front view into step number two's front view something like these exactly now let's have all the intersection points for example this o this line is for o and d okay so o is going to be here and d is going to be here similarly this line is going to be for e okay so this is e is horizontal and this is e is vertical okay so these are all the intersection points fine let's have all the points written down all right now we need to figure out as to which solid edges are going to be visible and which solid edges are not going to be visible which are visible are going to be made with solid lines and those things or edges which are not visible 
have to be given respect eventually but in a different way with the help of broken lines or hidden lines all right so let's move forward so i'm um, uh, when you look at this object from the front, this appears as a line, but this is in reality is not a line. This is A, B, C, D, E. What is A, B, C, D, E? It's a regular pentagon, all right? This regular pentagon, in fact, looks like a squeezed up pentagon when you look at this object from the front and in the position it has been kept. Okay, and moving further, this O, D, H is also going to be visible. This E, C, this O, E and O, C is also going to be visible. So we're going to make it dark. Whereas this guy, A, O and B, O will not be visible. But eventually, as I've said, it has to be given some respect like this. Broken lines, you see. All right. Now, now guys, uh, step two is over. That means one condition has been satisfied. Absolutely. No issues. Triangular face in VP. That's done and dusted. Let's move forward to condition number two, which says that um, the base edge of that triangular face which is in the VP, okay, please see my mouse hovering. The base edge of that triangular face which is in the VP, that means A dash, B dash, is going to make a certain angle. That certain angle in fact is 30 degrees with the horizontal plane, okay. So eventually in step number 3, uh, we're going to start with making the front view and we're going to recreate this over here making sure that this a dash b dash makes a certain angle theta with the horizontal plane that is 30 degree in fact okay so let's have a line a 30 degree line um in the next step what i'll do is what i'll suggest to all of you to do and replicate the same thing in your drawing sheet is you can see this rectangle okay so if i say that this portion okay you have this rectangle and this portion of the rectangle overlaps with this a dash b dash so i'm going to make this portion over here all right at an angle of 30 degree and then the remaining rectangle can be made over here something like this okay so this portion corresponds to this guy this these two edges corresponds to these two edges in step number three's front view and this edge corresponds to this one all right now we're going to have all these points a b c d all of them over here now let's start by locating point o dash okay you can see this o dash you can keep uh, one leg of your compass here uh, other leg over here then with this guy center you can put an arc and then you can have point o dash okay something like this all right then for locating b dash keep one leg over here other leg over here then with this guy center put an arc this is going to be point b dash for you okay same stuff has to be repeated for a dash also but in a different way um, again keep one leg of your compass here other leg over here okay with this guy as center put an arc this is going to be point a dash for you now let's move forward with point e and point c now both of them this and this if you keep one leg of your compass here other leg over here this it is going to have that arc is going to have a certain amount of radius that radius is going to be same for this guy also okay so you can repeat this this is going to be c all right and and with same arc radius with this guy as center you can have this point as point e okay now what we're going to do is we will locate a center for this line from this point to this point we have the center and we're going to join it with o something like this okay this this all right now with o dash and d dash as the arc radius okay keep one leg over here or the leg over here this guy is center o dash need to put an arc here again and this is going to be point d dash for you now let's join all these points in the same way that we have done here okay that's it that's it now in the next step i'm going to show you how it's corresponding top view is going to be made okay now we're going to look at this object from the top and it's going to have these so-called projector lines down below and we'll have projector lines from the top view of step number two so this is the top view of step number two that's it guys now eventually we have to look at all these points let's say for example this is the horizontal for d now let's figure out where the vertical for d is. so this is the vertical for d and that's going to be point d for you similarly you have this horizontal for e and c so this is going to be point c and over here this is going to be point e okay similarly you can work out all the remaining points and these are the location precise location of all the points now we need to think when you look at this object from the top this o dash e dash d dash triangular face is absolutely visible and at the same time this uh, o dash a dash e dash is also going to be visible now there is a certain amount of um, imagination that has to be carried out in order to prepare these drawings all right guys so three triangles are going to be visible from the top okay please have a careful look at this okay this is what i was talking about three triangles this oae this 
um, OED and this OCD. All right, guys. And this portion, let me talk on this portion also. C D E A. Okay. Fine. But there is still something missing. Okay. This guy from B to C. Um, there is an edge, but uh, we have not made that edge. Okay. It may not be visible from the top because it is hiding behind these so-called triangular faces, but it has to be given some respect, and that respect has to be given in the form of a broken line. That's it, guys. So that's the overall drawing of a pentagonal pyramid whose triangular face was resting on the vertical plane and at the same time its base edge was inclined at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal plane. So guys that was all from my side and if you have any doubts queries do write them down in the comment section below I'll try to answer them in the best possible way and as quickly as possible and if you find this video has added value to your knowledge do recommend this channel to all your friends your classmates so that all of us can benefit and enjoy and learn drawing so this is Manas Patnaik signing off take care have a great day and keep drawing